I love keeping it. Oh! My goodness. Hello, my sewing friends. I've been wanting to make this video for forever. I've had a ton of different sewing spaces, arrangements, whatever. This has been the most efficient for me and I'm able to sew in my house and be very productive with my sewing and not have the need for a huge sewing room. So if you're in a similar spot, go ahead and keep watching and see I've integrated my sewing space into my living space. So here we are in my living room. This is the main place where I store the majority of my sewing supplies. This little entertainment center is from Ikea and it's located just underneath my television. Here in drawer number one, we have, this is all fusible interfacing. Excuse my hands, I'm, I'm gonna work out soon. So I keep my fusible webbing, that's fusible web. This cute little tin has all of my like interface scraps. So if I need to interface something small, I'll put it in there. Um, but I also just have like all of my fusibles um, for sewing knits. This is some of my favorite stuff ever. It's great. And then um, some extra fusible web. And then here in the back, I have just extra interfacing. I keep this one as well as this one on hand. And then I also like to keep the fusible featherweight. This roll back here is actually a bunch of, I'm, it's not bias tape, it's like a single fold, uh, trim. I got this at a thrift store. I haven't been able to use it for anything yet, but when I find something, there it is. These are decorative and lingerie elastics. So I'm sorry, they're not decorative. I use this uh, quarter inch braided elastic a lot. These are bra straps. This is my favorite waistband elastic. It's a two inch elastic from Amazon. And then I just have like my Pico elastics, fold over, uh, this is bra strap. So kind of my pretty elastics go in there. And then in the third little bucket, I just have washi tape. Sometimes I use that to mark my machine. Uh, these are like buttons and sew on clasps. These are like drapery rings, uh, bra sliders, and the little things that you use for cords. So kind of like plastic notions. There's a bunch of different sizes of safety pins, really handy. And then I have my presser feet in here. Extra ones that I don't use very often. So the bins fit in here really well and it actually looks really nice whenever I close it. In the second drawer in my little entertainment center, I have, these are like woven trims. So this is just bias tape. I actually got it at the same spot. I got that other trim in the other drawer. Um, just some cord, pom-pom trim and then bias tape as well as a bias tape maker. I don't sew with woven fabrics very often, so I don't use bias tape that much. Um, I have maxi lock thread cones for my serger. Thanks, mom. Great Christmas gift. I have invisible zippers, which I'll be honest with you guys, I hate invisible zippers and in unlined garments, so maybe that's something I should address. So yeah, these are thread cones. This is my serger cover, as well as like, all the parts that come with my serger. I have an elasticator foot, so like anything I would need to change the presser foot or just maintenance the or maintain the serger. Uh, extra buttonhole foot. This is the foot pedal and power cord for my Genome sewing machine. And then in this, Sorry, I kind of went out of order. These are very, these are all my like functional elastics. So I have a uh, shearing thread. 
I have one inch braided elastic, some extra waistband elastic. This is braided as well. It's very soft. More elastic thread. Uh, these are like $1 little packs of elastic that I picked up from Walmart. I have two different types of clear elastic in here as well as, let's see, this is half inch braided elastic. This is three quarters inch non-roll. We got another inch one. And then I have the three eighths braided, it, three eighths braided elastic. Um, and then the quarter inch elastic I use all the time is over in the other drawer. So just my elastics I don't use all the time. And then in this bin I have eyelets, grommets, any kind of fastening or thing like that that needs to be set in, like with tools. And then I have a bunch of drawstrings and a couple of random bodkins. So I like these storage containers a lot. They are the Sterilite flip tops and they are the perfect size. So I like that whenever you close the drawers, you know, they're all kind of the same look. So here's the first drawer of my cart that I will move around wherever I need it at the time. I keep my rotary cutters here. I have a 45 millimeter as well as an 18. I don't really have a reason to have any other sizes. Uh, and this little thing, I keep a couple of seam gauges. Had to buy new ones because mine were all bent. I have a Clover Hera marker, which I don't use as much as I would like to. I'd like to get in the habit of using this more. Uh, I have my Clover Choco marker, which I love. Also, one of these pens, which are great. I have a more pointed wheel for pattern making, and then just a normal tracing wheel for chalk paper. And then I have my, one of my seam rippers. These are pretty cool because they have actually a little eraser thing. I'll call it eraser on the end. And you can, basically if you're ripping out a seam and you want to kind of gather up all the loose threads, you could just erase it and it gathers them all up. So I saw these at Walmart. It's called a seam fix. But it stayed sharp for a long time too. Under here, I have grips for my rulers, and then this is just chalk paper. And then this is a type of bodkin that was too long for that. Other place where I, I would normally store this with the grommeting tool and the drawstrings, but it was too, too large for that space. I have these Wonder Clip knockoffs I got from Amazon. I actually really like them. Uh, not super handy when you're using a serger, but in other, other instances, very handy. And then here is a little organizer that I use to keep my pins. I have like flathead flower pins that are quite long as well as like short ballpoint pins. And then I have glass head pins on my pin magnet. These are blades for my rotary cutter. I have them labeled new or old. These are straight pins for marking. These are extra sewing machine needles as well as hand sewing needles that I haven't organized into here. This is my needle stash that doesn't need to be right by my machines. And I will just tell you right now, I don't use the tracing paper hardly ever. So that's kind of why it's under everything. I have a little seam guide that's called a seams right I believe some fray check which I do encourage you to use caution with because it can get everywhere although a quick tip if you do get fray check on something soak it in rubbing alcohol and it should help you out 
I keep little bobbins of embroidery floss if I ever need to make tailor's tacks for anything, as well as a needle threader, which is down here. So this is the needle threader I use whenever I thread my serger tails back in. So that's pretty much it for the top drawer, except for I keep like a little just extra bobbin thing. I use the bobbin tire mainly, but I have that and then I have some safety pins back there. So that's drawer number one. And drawer number two, we have a bunch of random crap, mostly things that are like office related. Um, I obviously have some like Sharpies and pencils. And I have these little jewelry making pliers in case I ever need them. They also work pretty well as tweezers. I uh, have tape and glue for putting together PDF patterns. And like a staple remover, as well as a lint roller, a glue stick. And then this is one of my favorite things for putting together PDF patterns. It's a little scotch tape dispenser, but you can literally put it like anywhere and rotate it. So it's pretty cool. So it can rotate like that. Love this. I got it at Target during the holidays. And the third drawer, this is going to get less and less interesting. Here in this third drawer, I keep my Taylor's ham and my seam roll as well as a piece of silk organza that I use as a pressing cloth. I use this little cup to fill up my iron. Some spray starch for fabric that's difficult. One of these hot hemmers. I do actually use this from time to time. It's not totally worthless. I have iron cleaner. And then these are called thermal thimbles. There's three of them. I don't ever use those, although they might help if you don't want to melt your nails and you're using an iron. In the fourth drawer, we have Apologize. I know you guys can see my tripod leg in this shot, but I think you'll be okay. The fourth drawer holds my current projects that I haven't finished, as well as a note from an Etsy shop. So this is a tube top that I whoops, cut out, but have not sewn yet. So I'll just keep them in there. I try not to let those types of things pile up. This is pieces for a hoodie that I have not fully cut out. I have a mask here that I sewed, I believe at the beginning of this whole COVID thing, but classic Cassidy right here. Haven't sewed the straps on. What do you know? Silly girl. These are more drawstrings and kind of like a ready-made pack for making a pair of joggers. So I have like some interfacing squares here as well as a drawstring, waistband, and I even have some little eyelets. And then this is just some gorgeous stretch lace. I'm going to be sewing a lingerie set out of soon coming in February. If you're interested in that, go ahead and subscribe to the channel because I'm going to be doing that going to be doing that in February and then I have some old metal liners for some metal bins that I was going to recreate so that's what's in there and then the last drawer is just embroidery supplies And I have my favorite sewing book ever down here, the Reader's Digest Guide to Sewing. More embroidery thread, got a lot of it. And then embroidery projects that I have not finished. I'm a little more lenient with myself about not finishing these. And then what else is in here? Another buttonhole fit, what do you know? 
So I like to keep the book at the, in the lowest drawer so that the, the weight of this unit is on the bottom and it's not too terribly top heavy. So those are the contents of my so that was all the contents of my sewing cart. And on the top here, I keep pattern weights. Uh, these are my favorites, my favorite size. And I keep those on top of here and a little copper strainer I found at Goodwill. And then I just keep my magnetic pen holder. This is actually like a, a paper clip holder for your office. And then I keep, there's another magnet in here. You can't really see it, but I have magnets all over my sewing space. You will find that my sewing room has many sections. So this right now is my sewing table. It also functions as a dining table. What do you know? But I keep command hooks right here with my scissors and my favorite tape measure. And then, uh, I have these larger command hooks that fit my favorite rulers. So that's where those live. I keep one cutting mat, I believe under the table. I think it's under there. And then I have one on the table at the moment. And I keep my other sewing machine right there. It's just set up right now, ready to go. Got to put this hood in a hoodie. Down here, I have a little bit of extra space. I will usually keep scrap fabric for projects that I'm working on in this. And then that is just my sketchbook. And then I honestly don't know what's down here, but... A bunch of crap. So that's the secret to having an organized sewing room, y'all. Just have one cabinet where you can just shove all your crap. Another thing about this table that I like to do is just keep the table itself on these sliders so that I'm able to move it around uh, as I please. Not super glamorous, but this is where I keep my sewing patterns on top of my fridge. And I also keep my distilled water for my iron on top of my fridge as well. Over here is kind of like where I'll hang instructions for things I'm currently working on or if I'm in the middle of cutting out a pattern, I'll put it here. And then this is my bedroom and closet. You've been magically transported to my closet. So this is where I keep some of my fabric and like that's the hoodie I'm working on that I need to put the hood on. Um, but like I said, it's not all my fabric, only some. And then I keep my iron and my big ironing board all the way in this back corner. It's a per above the ironing board, I will keep sewing books. I believe that this is the, yeah, this thing's so cool. It's the Luterlo, uh, pattern thing. If you guys want me to do a review on this, or if you're interested in learning, it's the Luterlo pattern system. If you guys want a review or want to know about it, uh, please let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to do that. So yeah, we keep the iron there. I keep the Teflon shoe on the iron. And then my ironing board is too big for this holder, but we work with it. It's okay. The only other space I really keep any sewing supplies is going to be in my laundry room here. Don't judge me. It's going to be messy. But there's Patricia or Patrice. I, I give her a different name every day. So that's my mannequin. This is where I keep my sleeve board. Some extra hanging patterns. And then... I have more fabric 
up there. And then more rollers there. And then I have more fabric here, as well as a drill. So there you have it. Pretty much all the spaces where I have sewing things. Uh, I do want to say just I will be coming on camera, you know, with my face very soon, but I'm a little freaked out about it. So we're kind of warming up, but I hope that you enjoyed seeing my sewing space. If you have any questions, comments, want to tell me about your sewing space, drop a comment below. Uh, I love to hear from people who love sewing as much as I do. So I hope everyone's having a blessed new year and I just wish everybody a healthy, blessed, successful, good 2021.